Welcome everybody. This is the video you've been waiting for for everyone. No, I'm kidding. It's uh this is the RC series in our looping course. Um so what we're going to be doing is talking about loop stations that are not this bad boy over here. Sadly, <laughs> look at it. It's just hiding in the corner. Poor poor Looper X. Um but I understand that some people can't afford this Looper X and some of you already have the RC30 and you never wanted to turn it on. So basically we're going to jump in and we're going to talk about how this thing works and how you can use it for your advantage. If you have gone through most of the looping course that we have, it's free by the way, um, if you're new here from YouTube. But basically what we're going to do is pretty much approach this from just a single tracking perspective. Um, you have options to swap tracks and things like that, but I don't do that. I never did do that. I use this as a tool, as a reliable looper that had a very big memory bank. Um, I did not use majority of the features that it has available. I don't like the features because they require a bit of extra dancing and tap dancing, like holding down button, like it's just annoying. Or you would have to buy an external piece of equipment to put next to your pedal and you push the button and you could swap tracks. It's, it's, I don't like it, so. This is my least favorite video that I'm going to record, but I want to make sure that I cover all bases. So it is a great unit. I'm not going to like, I, I, I crap on it, but it, it can be, it's done very well for many people. Um, and it's on heaps of pedal boards. It's great. It will do the job exactly how you want it. Now, very first thing you want to do is uh, you want to make sure that this bad boy is set up correctly. So just right off the bat, you don't, I don't know if you've gotten this pedal like secondhand or anything like that. This might make noises and I'm really sorry if it does actually. One second, I'll just mute it because it will make some pretty aggressive noises. Um, so basically uh, what you want to do is the way it gets set up, you got, you got a power thing in here or you could chuck in batteries in the back here. Like it has like a little battery pack. So you can just take this as a looper um, well, there you go. You can see the batteries. So I can take that. I can play, I can play busking gigs. I can do all that, whatever random things. And, and it has helped me out. Like one time I had to play, um, I was playing on like a cruise, not like a cruise line, but it was like a, it's like a tour in a boat. And, um, and then I had to go and play on this Island where the people would hop off the boat. They would tour around this bay and hop on the island and then I was like oh there's no power here so I had this loop pedal which had batteries and I had my uh, battery powered speaker and I was like oh I'll just use this and um, it worked out really well so that was really lucky for me and so that that those came in clutch uh, so uh, that's the one time that I will say this thing is very very good compared to a looper X it um it doesn't need battery it, it, it has batteries and doesn't require power independently. So it can be very handy. But if you're in a studio like me, um, we don't give a shit about that. So, um, but what we're gonna do first things first, uh, we wanna make sure that we have this thing set up in the correct mode. Sorry, this power cable is not stretchy long enough. Um, but before what you're gonna do is, you've got the inputs here. So this output, so this input on this side, that's where I plug my guitar into. And then this other one over here, oh, so you guys can't see it, my bad. Um, so this one, the input, uh, that's where I plug my guitar into on the left mono. Make sure you do mono. Don't worry about stereo. Stereo is fancy. Um, and then over here, the left output, uh, that's where you're going to be plugging into your mixer or plugging into your speaker or whatever you need. Uh, and that is how we are going to get uh, everything flowing correctly. Now, before you do this, um, some people might buy these secondhand, so don't don't turn it on. It only turns on when I plug this thing in like this. So you see here, power comes on. So that's the only way you can turn this bad boy on is you plug the guitar lead in. Now I'm going to do this thing here. It's, it's called a factory reset. So basically the right button here, this one here in the middle, middle left of square, the rectangle, and then the on and off button on the rhythm. So you want to hold those two buttons down. This is going to be quite tricky for me to do. But you hold them down before you plug in the power. Then you plug in the power. And it has this FN mode. And then you take your fingers off. And then you're going to go on and off on the rhythm. It's going to make a flash again. And then you just go right. And then it's going to flash for a while. 
and just wait. This is it, resetting the RC30. So we're all gonna be on the same page if we do this. Very patiently. It does take a little bit of time. You could write a song, or you could tell a dad joke. Any second now. For everyone who's waiting for the dad joke, I'm sorry. It was coming, but it didn't. Anyway, uh, back to the RC30 dream. Okay, so once you've done that, we are now all together at the same place. Um, now, essentially, all you're going to do is, it's very, very simple. Uh, we're gonna go back to our, our looping laws, the laws of looping. Um, and basically, all you're gonna do is you're gonna record your first track and you do it like this. Oh, so my guitar's not. Oh, I forgot, I muted it. Whoops, let me go back. This is high production quality. I'll make sure the editor takes out this clip. All right, now we're good again. All right, okay, here we go. So I'm about to play my jam. We'll stick to shape of you. So I'm just gonna go. Done. Now if I, um, so I'm just gonna clear this real fast. I'm gonna show you how these little buns work. So if I go to record, doesn't overdub. Um, that's a custom thing that you can go into the settings and doing. I would not recommend that you do that. Um, uh, more times than not, especially if you're a beginner, you will mess things up. Um, overdubbing stuff is more for like an advanced player. And if you're very comfortable with doing overdubs and being an absolute savage, uh, you should go and throw this away and get a multi-track looper like the RC300 or the Looper X. So either way, either boats that you're in, you're either not using it because you're a beginner or you are using it and you um, are an experienced player, in which case uh, you should throw this in a bin and then go to get a good one because this thing is definitely not as good as a multi-track looper and you will thank me for it. Um, so when it comes to the recording, same deal as everywhere. Um, the left track is gonna be turning the loop on uh, and then it will record. And then the right track is stop uh, now, if you want to say I have this recording and then I want to overdub on this recording, I just have to hit the button and it starts recording. You see that red light record? This one just, it's on again. So that's recording. Now, if I want to clear the track, like undo, like say I've recorded something and I want to undo it, I can go. So say I want to undo something, like I just recorded something, I failed on like a little groove. Um, what I will do is I'll play the track and if I hold the left one, it will strip the most recent one that I did. So here. Now if I hold it, undo, it's gone. But um, it doesn't continually peel um, layers off. Uh, so that's a bit, a bit annoying. Now. If you wanna fully clear the whole track, you just go like this. Uh, it's, this is the, the trick, right? Get your foot like an absolute, nin absolute ninja. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna step on the stop button. You're gonna, as you're holding on the stop button, you're pushing down on the right button. So you hold the left one and then you go there. Ah. I accidentally turned this stupid thing on. Ah. I never know how to turn it off. I always have to push the button. I'm sure if I Googled it, I'd get it right. But sometimes I do dumb things. Like, uh, so if I do this one, it accidentally turns on. Just, this is why I hate this fucking pedal. I hate this shit. The amount of times that like you go to clear the loop and then you just accidentally turn that on, you're like, oh my God. Um, so, Anyway, this is the RC30. Um, if you have an RC30, uh, totally enjoy. I don't mean to like uh, break your hearts about it, but it's not, it's not this. It's not this and it's definitely not, it's, it's definitely not that one over there either. Where, where is she at? They, you see the 300 over the side? It's not that either. Now, one thing that you might be bothered with is like, oh, well, why? I can't get like all these cool sounds that everyone does. Um, 
So I use external effects. So I will have, if I was using the RC30, I'd have my loop, my line six helix. And so with my helix, that's what's getting my guitar tone. And then I got my bass tone. You know, um, but what happens is everything that is recorded into the RC30 is that it is there. Like you can't do much more manipulation with it. It doesn't have give you a lot of options. Um, the only other thing that I will make you aware of is whatever track you record into. So say I'm doing Shape of You. Let's just do a full loop. So I've got my groove going. And then we do a bass. Oh, or like a drum track. brings down the volume of the track. That does not bring down the volume of your playing. So this is how you can mix the track in. So I, I would recommend you figure out what level you want your loop to be. So if I'm playing Shape of You, and I want my, my guitar to still stand out, I wouldn't bring it all the way to the middle. Now, alternatively, if I wanted to be like, well, I want to have a bass track and a drum track to amplify my playing. So say I'm going to record, I'm going to go. And then I get ready. like I crank it up so that it like punches out harder into the mix but it doesn't affect my guitar playing unless I decide to record some guitar parts so if I record some guitar parts it'll be really loud so you see how now it's overpowering overpowers my guitar so that's the mixing element that you can do with the RC30 but um yeah it is is quite limited um, be clever, figure out what you like about it. But um, personally, uh, I don't like it. It's not my, it's not my fave. Um, with my curse of knowledge now, uh, I don't like this thing. Uh, it is very, very, like the only advantages that you have with this is it's small. It's small, it's a quick looper, it's gonna get you there. Um, but truly it's, it's uh, aside from size and uh, accessibility um, and for it being cheap, uh, it, it really doesn't tick tick the boxes for a good loop pedal um it's it's just a usable loop pedal so and in order to make this thing better you now have to spend money on extra things extra pedals extra ways to navigate its its system and it's just dumb it's just extra things like just go buy the better pedal honestly um is what i believe uh but yeah so we're gonna end this video now and uh i will do my rc300 uh tutorial on how i use it and yeah, hopefully you guys have a lot of fun with it because um, the RC300, I I do recommend. I would also recommend the RC300 over getting the Looper Plus um, just because I'm just so, I'm a very big fan of multi-track looping. Anyway, have fun, enjoy yourselves. Uh, hopefully this helped anyone who has an RC30. Um, it, it would help them know that they need to throw it in the bin uh, and get a good one. But if not, and it definitely did help you. I'm so I'm super glad. Uh, and uh, this thing did serve me for a very long time. Uh, so I do have an attachment to it, but it's kind of like, you know, it's like when you play a video game and you know you, you get that that rare weapon at level 20, and you're like, that was a cool weapon for like five levels, and then you and then you you compare it to the to the legendary bow.
over here. <laughs> That's how I see it. So it's useful, but as soon as you outgrow it, you've outgrown it. Um, and don't try to make it work because uh, it's it's definitely you are going to get more headaches than not trying to make this work. Uh, all right. Well, I'll see you guys soon.